Hello everyone. I think almost everyone who's been in high school have seen at least once the well-known function logarithm of x. I mean the name itself is quite interesting, but the most interesting thing for me was the fact that this function has this property. Transforming the product of the input into the sum of the output. In other words, you can say that f of a times b is equal to f of a plus f of b. I think this property makes logarithm so useful in so many domains, like engineering, statistics, and so many fields. And the reason is that dealing with the product is much more complicated usually than dealing with the sum. And logarithm solve this problem in the best way. Nevertheless, when I saw this function for the first time, I felt like there has to be something wrong with it. And I will explain why. From a visual point of view, if you have a function f of x, let's say, and you construct another function g of x, and this function is equal to f of alpha x plus beta, if you move the alpha, you will see that the function is stretching along the x-axis, like you see in the animation. But if you move the beta constant, you will see that the function is going up and down without stretching or squeezing. Now this is a basic transformation to any function. But the kind of weird thing is that if you do this for the function log of x, you will see the following. By changing the alpha parameter, which is the stretching parameter, you will think that this function is translating other than stretching along the x-axis. And if you change the beta parameter, you will see that it's really translating. It's kind of the translation and the stretching for this function are exactly the same. This just happened to the function logarithm because of the property we've seen before. This made me amazed and at the same time curious about why this property really exists. Just keep in mind that in this video I would not be talking about logarithms as the opposite of the exponential functions. As noted by Howard Eves, one of the anomalies in the history of mathematics is the fact that logarithms were discovered before exponents were in use. That means that logarithms have these inner properties independently from the exponentials. So without further ado, let's jump into the visual proof. The first thing that comes into mind when talking about visual proof and multiplication is a rectangle. A rectangle of side length b and height a. Changing the values of a and b will definitely change the rectangle but may not change the area of this rectangle. And as you can see it is a little bit hard to see if two rectangles have the same area. So the question is, is there a way to see if two rectangles have the same area or not? It turns out there is a way, so let me explain. Let's draw two parallel lines in this way. Now let's fade in two rectangles like this, one with side A and B and the other with side X and Y. We can visually prove that these two rectangles have exactly the same area. The only condition they have to obey is that these two lines have to be exactly parallel. In fact, this parallelism is what makes sure these two are equal. We can add these two other parallel lines. And you can see that the triangles above are equal and the triangles below are also the same. Not only that, but you can see that the other remaining parts are also equal exactly like this. Because the animation was a little bit fast, so I'm gonna repeat it another time.
you can see that these two parallel lines are the thing that really makes sure these two are equal no matter how you change the value a and b or x or y So this result is going to be named result number one. a times b equal x times y meaning that a divided by x is equal to y divided by b so that means in a configuration like this a divided by x is equal to y divided by b Which is also known as the Thales theorem, an ancient Greek mathematician who lived in the 600 BC. Now returning back to our equation before, we can see that if we change the value of y to 1, we will find a times b is equal to x times 1, which is x. That means that if we change the point y to be equal 1, by respecting the parallelism, x will be conversion to a times b. Now, no matter how the value of a and b changes, we can have the value a times b graphically without using any calculation. And this is part of what we are going to build. Because the inverse function is a key element in the definition of the logarithms, we have to see how to construct it visually. And this animation is showing exactly this. By tracking the point x, y, you can see that it is drawing a curve. Now, this curve is exactly the curve 1 over x. The reason is that every rectangle here has the same area as the area of the unit square, which is equal to 1. Which means that every time y times x is equal to 1. In other words, y equal to 1 over x. Moving on to the next result. We have seen that by constructing two rectangles with this way, we have exactly the same area. By adding another parallel line, we will have two big rectangles that have exactly the same area, like result number one. Now, the remaining two rectangles also will have the same area because they are the difference between the big and the small rectangles. And voila, there is the result number three. You can say it is an updated version of the result number one. Now, if we subdivide each one of these rectangles into 10 identical different rectangles and fitting the height of every rectangle along with the curve 1 over x, you will find these two interesting shapes. Now, there is no surprise that these two also have the same area because every element of them has the same area using the result number 3. By increasing n towards infinity, you will see that these two interesting shapes converge to the area and the curves. And this is the final and fourth result. If you have two shapes like this, separated by two lines like this parallel, then you have to know that these two have the same area. Having now these four results, we can now prove why ln of a times b is equal to ln of a plus ln of b visually. Now, let's take an arbitrary quantity. A. And let's draw the area between A and 1. 
its area will be equal exactly ln of a by definition. Now, if we take another b and draw the area between b and 1, its other area will be equal to ln of b. Now, by drawing a line starting from 1 to a and another line starting from b to the x-axis, it will intersect the x-axis on exactly a times b, like we've seen before. We can now confidently say that the area between b and 1 is exactly the area between a and a times b. That means that the area between 1 and a times b is equal to the area between 1 and a plus the area between 1 and b. In other words, ln of a times b equal ln of a plus ln of b. Thanks for watching if you made it so far and subscribe if you want to see the next part where I will prove this limit using the same setup visually.